Hey everyone, Toshi here. In today's video, we'll be going over my plans for Honkai Star Rail when the game actually does release. Now, as you all know, I've had time to actually go ahead and play the CBT3 and I'm very thankful for that. So I am a little more experienced when it comes to the actual game overall. We'll be going over my plans as it goes from the beginning of the game and transition that plan all the way to the late game. Let's get into the video. Now, we start off with the re-roll. This is going to be the very first step to my plan, the most important part rather, because this is going to dictate where my account goes into the future of the game. Getting a 5-star early is going to be crucial, because I don't know if I will ever be able to obtain that character, I would say, two years from when I start playing the game. As you all know, the selective summon does exist, but this will take a very, very, very long time to actually go ahead and complete. 300 summons to get an additional 5 star you can select on the banner is going to be really hard. And then there is, like I said before, multiple characters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you have a 1 in 7th chance of obtaining this character at the 5 star pity while having a 50 50 whether or not you get a light cone or a 5 star character at the actual pity. So your chances of getting, let's say, Jet Part from the banners are extremely low. So with that in mind, I want to go ahead and get Branya early in the game so I don't have to worry about getting her later on in the game. But then I could use my selective summon when I get this in the future on a character like Bailu or Well. These two characters I really do want to have on my account. Next up, I actually do want to try and snipe a character from the character event warp early in the game. Now, depending on how many summons they give us when we actually do, like the game does launch, uh, I say this because Genshin Impact on the release of that game, a lot of players did end up getting more summons to roll on their banners and get a 5 star early uh, because they did get, like I said before, a lot of summons to reroll. Now I don't know if they're going to do the same thing with this game where they give us like 40, 50, you know, uh, summons worth of primo gems or, or, you know, summons to get all together. I don't know if they're going to do that, but let's say they did it and let's say they didn't do it. Um, I would still try to snipe a limited early uh, limited character early from the banners just because the actual chances of getting this character is already 50 50 to begin with um and as of right now there isn't enough currency now we'll talk about this you know in the next step but there isn't enough currency to guarantee a five star limited character at the time i'm recording now this could change when the game does launch but that's not a very good thing to keep in mind um you won't be able to guarantee seal unless you get lucky. Now, as I said before, the currency from early to late game is actually pretty low. Now, when you, if you played Genshin Impact, there is a lot of currency with the expiration. If we take a look here at the map, uh, you do get treasure. There is treasure chest, there is challenges, puzzles, and warp trotter. All of these give you a source of stellar jades. Now, as I said before, the chance, like the actual amount you get in the game overall is still pretty low. Especially if you played a game like Genshin Impact, where a lot of your, your you know sources of primo gems comes from the expiration. You don't really get too much of that in the expiration in this game. Now, we are in technically the first region. They did, however, release a second region, which is going to be kind of like Li Wei when, when Li Wei did release. I don't have it unlocked right now, but it is Zhang Shou, which is the pretty much Li Wei equivalent like in Genshin Impact. And as of right now, as I said before, the time recording this, you are not guaranteed a five star limited character when you do pretty much get all the currency you would be able to get, let's say up to AR40, for instance. When you get to AR40, so level 40 in this game, you are not guaranteed enough pretty much summons to get the five star limited character. I don't know why I keep saying that, but it, it kind of annoys me. So what I'm trying to say is be very wise with your resources and make sure that you don't, you know, use all of your resources early because you'll run out and you're going to be like, wait, where's summon? I don't have any. Yeah, because you use them all. Okay, next up, let's talk about the two teams I want to have for Spiral Abyss and Forgotten Hall. Now, as you all know, there has been people or a lot of people playing the CBT as a uh, CBT3, right? Because a lot more people have been getting into it because of the giveaways and stuff Hoya has been doing, which I'm very thankful for. The very first team here is the counter team. This is a very nice team you could use to clear some of the harder content in the game. Uh, it is centered around Clara doing most of the damage. You put the March 7 shield on Clara and Clara pretty much goes to work, doing lots and lots of single target damage to the enemy team. Natasha is here for the heals, and then the main character, or pretty much any other character you can slot in here, probably the fire uh, tank main character you can put in here. 
will also be pretty nice in the team as well. Then the AoE wave clear team I think is really nice. Now you can uh, put any other character instead of Himiko, but I think Himiko is the best in slot for a team like this. This team is very good when it comes to AoE farming in the game. Uh, as you all know, I did the team building guide. You can check that out. I'll have that video link in the description. But this team is really good for a lot of AoE wave clear. And I think it'll be pretty good for late game content as well. Assuming you have nice artifacts or rugs or gear to support the two DPS character. Then there is the single target DPS team or the hyper carry team as I call it. And this features, you know, putting all your resources into the one character that does the most damage or the only DPS on your team. And this is going to be Den Heng. Now, you could put another character like Seal, who is also a very nice single target damage dealing character. And you can also put another character like Yan Ching, who also does nice single target damage. And then you could put another character like Bronya in the last slot to, you know, buff up the DPS as well. But this team is a very nice team to have when it comes to tackling harder cons in the game. Because this is probably going to be the team you use to deal the most damage. And I said that because, whoa, well, this is one of the end game game modes in the game. This is going to be the Forgotten Hall, which is the Spiral Abyss equivalent in this game. You need two teams at a certain point to be able to tackle, you know, stages in the game. Um, it's pretty much like Genshin Impact's equivalent. Now, I will say one thing as well. And these stages do get progressively harder like they would in Genshin Impact. And you get rewards whenever you do clear these stages up to a certain point and lastly here is the other bit of in-game content we have in the game currently and this is going to be simulated universe now you do need some pretty strong characters to tackle this especially when you are doing the harder difficulties in the game but yeah making sure you have a team that is ready to go for tackling content like this is going to be very very important now let's take a look at the actual events in the game one the first event here is Stellar flare this is going to be like any combat event you probably experience in Genshin Impact, um, you do the combat. I mean, the rewards are relatively easy to get. My characters aren't even built that well, and I was still able to clear it. You can see here, current team level too low, and I still actually was able to clear it. And I got the rewards for clearing it. Um, you don't really need to do Super Giant Star. You can do it. You get like some artifact XP, which is also nice, or relic XP, excuse me, same thing. And then you get some more, uh, some credits, which is also nice. But you, all you really need to get is the Primo Gems, right? The Stellar Jades. And you get that by, you know, clearing the first difficulty. So yeah, you don't have to worry about ever having a team properly built for this. Because you'll be able to clear it while having a mediocrely built team. Lastly, let's talk about the actual resource management. Now, saving your resources until late game is going to be very important. Um, first of all, let me mention this. As of right now, there is no character ascension rewards. So you, like, you know in Genshin Impact where you were able to ascend your character. And then once you ascend your character to a certain point, you got a summon you could do on the standard banner. Well, as of right now, that's not in the game currently. Um, if it was in the game, honestly, they'd probably have it in the CBT3, no copium, right? So it probably won't be on the release of Honkai Star Rail. And I really do believe that it was a nice way to get extra rolls for the banners. Um, now, you know, play devil devil's advocate here i believe the reason why they don't have it is because they have this instead now and this is you know harder to obtain especially you know considering that we don't get the actual summons whenever you do ascend a character to a certain point because if we did then 300 would be really easy to get so yeah since we do not have a sole reason to level up and ascend every single character in the game because we don't get rewards for doing it well you can be more efficient with your resources. You can build your favorite characters or the characters you want to build for your account and not really have to worry about chasing rewards here or there for, you know, extra summons to reach the pity on the banner. Well, because there's no rewards to begin with. So saving your resources to be able to level up your favorite characters. Like, for instance, I want to level up Asa because I actually enjoy this character a lot. Then Hank, I want to max out this character because I think he's really, really good. Himiko, I want to level up this character because she's a five star. She's rare, so I need to level her up. Clara, this character is pretty good in the counter team. Be really nice and crucial for that team, so I want to ascend her because she'd be really valuable in that, account, that team. Arlen, I don't think I will ever use this character. I mean, I do make YouTube videos, so I probably should at some point. But yeah, I'm not going to level him up because I'm not going to use him. Serval, I'm not going to use this character even though we get her for free. I'm, I'm not going to use her, so I don't see a point in leveling her up on this account. So what I'm trying to say is build your favorite characters because there is no reward for building every single character in the game other than 
you know, I don't know, completionist attitude. The fragile resins you get in this game. This is going to be very important. Save this for the late game like you would in Genshin Impact because this is what you're going to use to actually replenish your resin in this game. And you would use that to farm artifacts. Pretty much just farm gear in this game. Like I said before, there is no true benefit of using the resin to actually ascend characters because you don't get extra rolls along the way. So using it to actually just farm free artifacts is going to be the best efficient thing you could do for your account. And that's what I'm going to do for my account. So I'm going to save this for the late game until I'm able to farm five star relics. And then I would use these to, you know, farm the relics for the strongest character in my account. In that case, it may be Seal, it may be, you know, Dan Hang, whatever character that may be. Lastly, I'm going to talk about one more thing. This is going to be very important for free play to also keep in mind. Um, when you do start your journey on the, you know, Herta Space Station, depending on where you kind of want to take your account towards, uh, I would recommend probably saving up, you know, all of your Undying Starlight for one of these five stars, depending on the character you want it for. Like, for instance, Clara. Let's see how good hers is. Restoring HP whenever she attacks is, is going to be really good. This is going to be really nice, especially when she takes damage. I, I can't imagine this being really bad. And then 20% damage increase until the end of the next turn. So she's going to be counterattacking a lot. So that's a 20% damage increase whenever she counters. This is really, really good for Clara. Obviously, it's her best in slot. So you want to save up to, you know, get the five star weapon for the character you want to use the most. And uh, for me, that may be Branya and maybe Bailu, maybe well, depending on, you know, what my account looks towards to be in the future. Maybe I want all three at a certain point. So I'd save up my Undying Starlight or Star Glitter to get the weapons for each character that I want to get the weapon for, instead of buying the extra pools for the banners. And I have not mentioned this in any other video, and I apologize, but you do get these free summons in the shop each month, like you would in Genshin Impact. All you need to do it's just have enough, you know, star, star glitter. You could buy five uh, summons each, so five star row pass, and then five special star row pass, which is going to be limited summons, and then the, you know, regular summons. So yeah, you can get this each month. I forgot to mention. And lastly, this is a little bit of people talk. I want to have two accounts for when the game does release. I want to have one free to play where I pretty much tackle the game, uh, clear all the content in the game with having just free play characters, the characters you get for free in the game. That'd be really nice. Uh, so like a no gotcha account would be pretty cool. And then I want to have another account where I pretty much just min max the heck out of it. I like, you know, reroll crazy, get like two, three, five stars in one. Three is like nearly impossible, right? Two, five stars in one ten pool. And then, you know, I just like constantly min max. I'm like leveling up the best meta characters and tackling the hardest content and then making tr trivializing that content because I have a crazy Sampo Kafka dot team. Or, you know, like I have a C6, you know, uh, Silver Wolf, and then she's just like this crazy, amazing supporter DPS character. That'd be really cool. And that's kind of what I want to do on that account in the future. But that's going to be my plan for Honkai Star Row for when the game does release. I tried to make this as informative as possible. So I hope you all got something out of this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know what your plan is going to be for the release of Honkai Star Row. I always love hearing what all of you have to say. Well, thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day.